Simple and compound interest. This is one of my favorite topics here. Let's begin with simple interest. Well, simple interest is a mathematical fiction created to teach the idea of interest to grade school children. Absolutely no one in the real world uses simple interest. It is unlikely to appear on the test. With simple interest, the interest payment, the dollar amount of the interest payment, is exactly the same each time. So let's think about this. Bob deposits $1,000 in an account that yields 5% simple interest compounding annually. Well, 5% of $1,000 is $50. So what this really means is that every year, Bob is going to get another $50 worth of interest. So in the first year, $1,000 plus 50, we get 1050. Then in the second year, we add $50 again. Then we add $50 again. And in each year, all we're doing is we're adding that same amount, $50. And so the account is rising by $50 each year. The exact same amount, dollar amount, is added each time. Simple interest pays interest only on the principal and not on the interest. Thus, the amount of interest accrued makes no difference to the interest payment, which is the same in each period. And indeed, as this graph shows, if we were to graph the amount in the account versus time, it would rise as a straight line. All that's happening each year is another $50 is being added, so that's why it rises at a constant slope. Simple interest is not often tested directly, but, and this is very important, it can be used for estimation purposes. And we'll talk about this more later in this video. The big idea of compound interest is interest on interest. In compound interest, we get the percent of interest paid on the total amount that has already accrued in the account, principal plus all previous interest payments. Thus, the more interest that has accrued, the larger the amount of the next interest payment. No two successive interest payments are ever the same, so the dollar amount is always different. The entire amount experiences the same percentage increase in each period. So that's what stays the same. It's not the dollar amount that stays the same. It's the percent increase that stays the same. That's what's going on in compound interest. So for example, Bob deposits $1,000 in an account that yields 5% interest compounding annually. So that means that every year, the amount in the account is going to experience a 5% increase. So it's going to get multiplied by 1.05, which is the multiplier for a 5% increase. So we start at $1,000. So construct that multiplier, 1.05. Multiply by 1.05, we get 1050. Notice after one year, that we get exactly the same amount either with simple or compound interest and that will always be that will always be the case if we're compounding annually that after one year one compounding period simple and int simple interest and compound interest get exactly the same amount after that they diverge so after two years we multiply 1050 by this same multiplier we get 1102.50 then multiply by that multiplier again and again, so these numbers are starting to get very hairy. So first of all, don't worry about getting these numbers by hand. You'd need a calculator to get these numbers. That's important thing number one. Important thing number two to notice is that, say after four years, simple interest would get up to $1,200. So here we have $1,215.50. We've done a little bit better than simple interest would do for us. Now, you might say, well, $15, what's the big deal about that? Well, think about it this way. Here, we've only talked about four years. Four years is a relatively short time in terms of investing. And we've only talked about a principle of $1,000. $1,000 is peanuts in terms of large scale investing. And so you really have to think about this in terms of a more grand scale. With large amounts of money and or long periods of time, the difference between successive interest payments becomes substantial and also the difference between the total amount gained with compound interest versus the total amount gained with simple interest becomes substantial. So big idea number one, compound interest always outperforms simple interest as long as there's more than one year. That is to say, as long as there's more than one compounding period. 
And this graph really summarizes it. The green line is the straight line of simple interest. The purple curve is the line of compound interest. Notice that it curves away from simple interest. It accelerates away from simple interest. So in the short term, it does a little bit better than simple interest, but then the longer we go, the more it diverges and the much, it does much, much better than simple interest does. By the end of this graph, notice that the compound interest payment the compound interest total is over a thousand dollars more that is the size of the principal it's more than the size of the principal above the simple interest also notice in y years the principal will be multiplied by the percent increase multiplier y times let p be the principal and r be the multiplier then the total amount in the count after n years is p times the multiplier to the power of y we can even be a little more formal about this. Of course, if the annual percentage interest rate is i, then the multiplier for that, we change the interest to a decimal, that is divide by 100, and then add 1. That's how we get a percentage increase. So that's the multiplier for an i percent increase. And of course, we're going to be multiplying by that y times. Now here's what I'm going to say. I printed a formula here. Do not, do not, do not memorize this formula. That would be a big mistake. Instead, what I want you to do is understand the logic of how this formula was put together and when you're doing a problem, rebuild the formula using that logic. Do not blindly memorize the result. So here's a formula and I'll show what I mean. Sheila invests $4,000 in an account that yields 6% compounding annually for eight years. What is the total amount after eight years? So again, don't worry about getting the dollar amount. Just worry about getting the correct formula, the correct expression for the amount that would be in the account after eight years. And I'll urge you to pause the video and try this on your own. So here's what I'll say. Here's how we'll approach this. The multiplier for a 6% increase, that's 1.06. It's going to get multiplied by that eight times. So the total amount in the account is going to be 4,000 times that multiplier 1.06 to the eighth. So that is the mathematical expression for the total amount in the account after eight years. Now, of course, no one's going to expect you to calculate this without a calculator. But keep in mind that the test may not be asking for actual dollar amounts. The test may well list answer choices that are in this form. Certain amount times some, per, some decimal to a sum power, and then you have to recognize this particular one as the right answer. So sometimes the test actually does that, and just knowing how to construct the formula is enough to get the answer. Things get more interesting when we change the compounding period. Banks always give an annual percentage interest, but they may compound quarterly or monthly or even daily. For any compounding period smaller than a year, we need n, where n is the number of times that compounding period would occur in the year. So for example, quarterly, that means n equals 4. We're compounding 4 times a year. Monthly, n equals 12. We're compounding 12 times a year. Daily is 365. We're compounding 365 times a year. Technically, we'd be compounding 365 days during a regular year and 366 during a leap year. Let's not even worry about that. The test is not going to get into the region where you have to worry about leap years versus regular years. That's not something the test is going to do to you. Suppose the bank plays, pays 5% annual interest compounding quarterly. The bank does not pay us 5% each quarter. That's not what's going on. That would be unrealistically generous. Instead, the bank pays us 5% divided by 4, which is 1.25%. That's the percent each quarter. In general, if there are n compounding periods in the year, we divide the annual percentage increase by n to get the percent for each individual compounding period. So we divide by 4 to, for quarterly compounding. We divide by 12 for monthly compounding. The correct multiplier now would be the multiplier for a percent increase of i divided by n. So writing this out very algebraically, 1 plus i over 100n, that's our multiplier. 
in y years there would be n compounding periods each year or n times y in y years and so it means that we're multiplying by that multiplier n y times so the total formula is this and again do not do not do not do not memorize this formula that would be an exceptionally bad idea instead I want you to think through the logic of it and as it were rebuild this formula each time using the logic of the situation that is true understanding here's another problem if Susan invests a thousand dollars in an account that yields five percent annual compounding quarterly then how much does she have to, after six years again don't worry about getting an exact dollar amount just see if you can build the correct formula you can pause the video here and work on this so the first thing I'll say is that five percent annual has to get divided by four so the quarterly percentage is 1.25 percent the multiplier for that is 1.0125 so that's our multiplier the amount in the account experiences that percent increase four times each year or 24 times in six years so we're multiplying by that multiplier 24 times so the final amount will be the the principal a thousand dollars times that multiplier to the power of 24 okay so that's the expression and again if the problem is simply looking for building the correct formula that's the correct formula I'll also say that we could approximate this sometimes the test will want us to approximate we can approximate using simple interest so let's think about this five percent that's fifty dollars so that means in six years they'd get fifty dollars six times three hundred dollars that means simple interest gives us thirteen hundred dollars so we can estimate that the compounding interest over six years is going to be something slightly more than thirteen hundred dollars probably not going to be as large as fourteen hundred so that kind of gives us a ballpark range for how much interest we're going to, going to accrue here how does the size of the compounding period determine the interest earned over time for this we will need a large principal and a long amount of time let's say that the annual interest rate is five percent the principal is a million dollars and the time is 20 years so we're really pumping up both the amount that we're dealing with as well as the time to look at these subtle differences so on that scale simple interest would give us two million dollars after 20 years compounding annually would give us 2.6 and then we see the other numbers for compounding quarterly monthly daily and hourly notice that as we up the compounding the more and more compounding we do the amount of total interest we get paid increases as the compounding period decreases the overall amount of interest earned increases so that's a big idea also you always do better with more compounding in summary we talked about simple interest not very realistic not likely to appear by itself but an excellent approximation tool we talked about compounding annually then we talked about compounding other periods quarterly and monthly one big idea is that compound interest always pays more than simple interest that's a really important idea that's important especially when you're using the simple interest approximation and also it's important to know that more compounding periods give us more money.